The simplest combination circuit will have three resistors. Since all the resistors are given, determine the total resistance. In order to do this, we need to figure out is this a parallel circuit or is this a series circuit? So from the previous videos, we understand that by convention, the long plate is positive, the short plate is negative, and current will flow in, from high to low. So this is going to flow in the clockwise direction. If you notice, the battery and R1 is in series because there's only one direction the current could flow through. Once it reaches the junction, the current could go through R2 and R3. Since there is more than one path, R2 and R3 are in parallel. So if all the resistance are given, start furthest from the battery and calculate the resistance. Since R2 and R3 are in parallel, we're going to use the parallel rule, which is 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So this becomes 1 over 10 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms is equal to 1 over RT. Using your calculator, calculate the total resistance. So the total resistance should become 5 ohms. If you don't remember, check the previous video. So I could redraw this circuit with one resistor to replace R2 and R3. Now the circuit looks like the following. We still have R1, but now R2 and R3 is replaced by the total resistance. The total resistance here is 5 ohms and R1 is still 10 ohms and the battery is still 10 volts. Current will still start at 10 volts and go clockwise. And if you notice in our new circuit, there is only one loop. Therefore, R1 and RT are in series. So to find the total resistance of the series, it's going to be R1 plus RT, which is equal to 10 ohms plus 5 ohms, which is 15 ohms. So the total resistance here is going to be 15 ohms. So I can find the total current. The total current is going to be IT is equal to VT over RT, which is 10 volts divided by 15 ohms, which equals 0 0.6 seven amps. So I know this is 0 0.67 amps. My total resistance is 15 ohms. Since the battery has a current of 0.67 and we know that the battery and R1 are in series, that tells us I1 is also equal to 0.67 because current in a series circuit is constant. So I could find V1. V1 is equal to I1 times R1, which is 0 0.67 amps times 10 ohms, which is 6.7 volts. So we know the voltage at R1 is 6.7 volts. We also know that the current is 0.67 because it's in a series. We know that R1 and RT, the parallel branch, are in a series. Remember, voltage in a series circuit adds up. So V1 plus V total, the parallel branch, must equal to 10 volts. So 10 volts equals to 6.7 volts plus Vt. Thus, Vt equals 3.3 .3 volts. Since we know the RT is the parallel branch, voltage is constant in a parallel. 
So that means the voltage that goes down here and the voltage that goes down here must be the same, 3.3 volts. So V2 is going to be 3.3 volts. R3, V3 is going to be 3.3 volts. So using Ohm's law, I could find the current. So the current is I2, V2 over R2, which is 3.3 divided by 10, which is 0.33 amps. I could repeat the procedure for I3, which is V3 over R3, which is 3.3 volts divided by 10 ohms, which is 0 0.33 amps. So if I fill the table up, this is 3.3, this is 3.3. Since R2 and R3 are parallel, we only count that once, so 3.3 plus 6.7 will equal to 10 because we know that the parallel branch and R1 are in series. The current here is 0 0.33, 0 0.33, and that makes sense too because in a parallel branch, the current splits. So R1 had a current of 0.67. When it entered this junction here, Part of it went to R2, part of it went to R3. Since the resistors were the same value, the current will split evenly. Pause the video, find the missing information, and check your answer. So again, all the resistance is provided, so we could find the total resistance. In order to find the total resistance correctly in a combination circuit, we have to figure out how the circuit is orientated. Is it series or is it parallel? We know that current flows from high potential, which is the long plate, to the low potential, which is the short plate. So it's going to go clockwise. At this junction here, the current could go through R1 or R2 and 3 at the same time. Since there is multiple paths, this is a parallel circuit. However, if you look at the right branch, you have R2 and R3. R2 and R3 is in series to each other because in order for the current to travel through R3, it must go through R2 first, so there is only one path. So the main circuit is parallel with a series. We are going to work from right to left because the battery is on the left side. We're going to find the total resistance of R2 and R3. R2 and R3 are in series, so R2, 3 is going to be R2 plus R3, which is equal to 10 ohms plus 20 ohms, which is 30 ohms. I'm going to redraw this circuit and replace the R2 and 3 by one resistor. So the redrawn circuit would look like this. This will still be R1. This will be 10 volts. And then we will replace the R2 and 3 with one resistor, which is 2, 3, which is 30 ohms. Now you notice that R1 and R2 and 3 are in parallel. So using the parallel formula, I am going to find the total resistance of the circuit. So formula is 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 3. I'm going to plug my numbers in. So this is 1 over 5 ohms plus 1 over 30 ohms using your calculator or like denominators. If you solve your math, you should get approximately 4.29 ohms. So that means our total at the battery is going to be 4.29 ohms. Now I can find the current because I know the total voltage and I know the total resistance. 
this is 10 volts divided by 4.29 ohms this equals to 2.33 amps so my current is 2.33 amps my total resistance is 4.29 ohms so now we know that the main circuit is parallel in parallel the voltage is constant since the battery R1 and R23 combine are in parallel the voltage that goes through R1 is 10 the voltage that goes through R23 is 10 so that means V1 is equal to 10 volts so I could solve for I1 I1 is going to be V1 over R1 which is 10 volts divided by 5 ohms which is 2 amps so we know this is 10 and this is going to be 2 amps the next part there are two ways you could do it we know the total current so in a parallel circuit the current splits so if that is true the current in the battery is going to equal to the I1 plus I23. So if I do that, the total is 2.33 amps equals to 2 amps plus I23. That tells you I23 is equal to 0 0.33 amps. Since I know R2 and R3 are in series, the current has to be the same because current in a series circuit is constant. So this has to be 0.33 amps and this has to be 0.33 amps. So I2 is equal to 0.33 amps. I3 has to equal to 0.33 amps. So now I could find the voltage because the voltage of 2 is going to be I2 R2 which is 0 0.33 amps times 10 ohms which is 3.3 volts V3 is going to be I3 R3 which is equal to 0 0.33 amps times 20 ohms which is equal to 6.6 .6 volts so this becomes 3.3 and R3's voltage is 0 0.66 and that is correct because the entire branch needs 10 volts because it's parallel to the battery and if you notice in a series circuit the voltage total has to add up so that means V2 plus V3 must equal to 10 and 3.3 volts plus 6.6 .6 volt is approximately 9.9 .9 volts since we're dealing with fractions it's close to 10 volts Pause the video, find the missing variables, and then check your answers. This combination circuit is different from the previous circuits. So again, we're going to find the direction of the current to determine what type of circuit we have. So long plate is positive, short plate is negative. By convention, current goes in clockwise direction. We know that the battery and the resistor are in series because there is one path. At this junction, current could go through R2 or R3. So R2 and R3 are parallel to each other, but in series to R1 because the current splits right after R1. Since all the resistance are not given, what we need to do is look for voltage or current that is common. So if you notice, voltage 3 is given as 5 volts. 
Because we know R2 and R3 are parallel, the voltage that goes through this branch is 5 volts, and the voltage that goes through R2 branch is 5 volts. Because in a parallel circuit, voltage is constant. I could find the current at R3 because I have V3 and R3. So I3 is going to equal to V3 over R3, which is 5 volts, divided by 10 ohms, which is 0 0.5 amps. Since I know the current in R3 is 0.5 amps, and I know that R3 and R2 are in parallel. We could determine the current through R2 because the total current is given as 2 amps at the battery. So this current is the same as in I1 because those are in series, so this is 2 amps. And at this junction, the 2 amp splits. So R3 gets 0.5. That means R2 will get 1.5. Because IT is going to equal to I2 plus I3. So 2 amps will equal to I2 plus 0 0.5 amps. So I2 has to equal to 1.5 amps. So I2 is 1.5, this is 0 0.5. We also know the voltage because R2 and R3 are parallel, so I could solve for R2 because that will equal to V2 over I2, which is 5 volts over 1.5 amps, which will equal 3.33 ohms. 3.33 ohms, and this will be 2, will be 5 volts. So since I know R1 and the battery are in series, we know the current is 2 amps. So V1 is going to be I1 R1, which is 2 amps times 10 ohms, which is 20 volts. So this is 20, and this is 2 amps. Now I can find the voltage at the battery. If I redraw this circuit, we know this is R1 and R2 and R3. If we combine them with the parallel formula, we could replace it by one resistor. And if you notice, there is a series circuit. So that means the voltage that goes through R1 plus the voltage that goes through R2, if it adds up, it will be the voltage at the battery. So V total is going to be V1 plus V23, right? And so V1 is 20 ohms plus 5 ohms, so this is going to be 25 volts. We only count a constant voltage once. So since the voltage is constant, it's only 5. You do not double the 5. So this is 25. Now I can find the total resistance because R total will equal to V total over I total, which is 25 volts divided by 2 amps, which will equal to 12.5 ohms. Pause the video, find the missing variables. This circuit is similar to the previous circuit. We're going to determine how the current flows so we could determine what type of circuit it is. 
Long plate is positive, short plate is negative by convention current will flow clockwise. The battery and R1 is in a series because there is only one direction the current could travel through. At this junction, the current could go through R2 and R3, so R2 and R3 are in parallel. Since all the resistance are not provided, you need to find a current or you need to find a voltage. So if I look at the battery and R1, battery and R1 are in series. Since they are in series, the current has to be the same. Since the current at I1 is 3 amps, the current at the battery has to be 3 amps. So I could find my total resistance by V total divided by I total, which is 8 volts divided by 3 amps, which equals 2.67 ohms. So if I fill my table up, this is 3 and this is 2.67 ohms. I cannot solve for R1 right now because I have too many unknowns. So I look at my parallel branch. If I look at my parallel branch, I can solve for I2. I can solve for I2 because V2 is provided and R2 is provided. So V2 is 5 divided by 10 ohms. So this is 0 0.5 amps. So now that I know I2 has 0.5 amps, I could find the current through R3 because I know the total current. 3 amps flows through R1. At this junction, the current will split between R2 and R3. Since I2 gets 0.5, the remaining will go to R3 because I total is equal to I2 plus I3. I total is 3 amps equals to 0 0.5 amps plus I3, so I3 has to equal to 2.5 amps. Since I know the current, I could solve for my resistance. Why? If I look at this circuit, this is in parallel to this. If I look at my circuit, R2 and R3 are in parallel. If the voltage that goes through the R2 is 5 volts, that means the voltage that goes through R3 has to be 5 volts too. Therefore, V3 is equal to 5 volts, and I can solve for R3 using Ohm's law. So R3 is going to be V3, I3, which is 5 volts, divided by 2.5 amps, which equals 2 ohms. So if I fill up the table a little bit, so R3 was 5 volts, my current was 2.5 amps, my resistance was 2 ohms, my R2, my current was 0 0.5 amps. I could now solve for R1 because we stated that the main circuit was in series. In series, the voltage total in series, the voltage total adds. So V total is equal to V1 plus V of the parallel branch, 2, 3. So if this is 8 volts, this is V1 plus 5 volts. Remember, if it's in parallel, you count the voltage once. So that means V1 is equal to 3 volts. Since I know I1 is equal to 3 amps, using Ohm's law, V1 over I1 is 3 volts over 3 amps or 1 ohms. So this is 1 ohm, and this is 3.
pause the video, find the missing variables, and check your answers. Again, we're going to determine the direction of the current to find what type of circuit is present. So current goes from high potential to low potential. So it's going to go clockwise. We know the battery and R1 are in series because there's only one path. It's going to reach this junction and the current is going to split because it could go down R2 or it could go through R3 and 4. So R1 is going to be in series to this parallel branch right here. Within this parallel branch, there is also series because in order for current to travel through R4, it must travel through R3 first. Since all the resistance is not provided, we need to find either voltages or current. We know that the voltage in this branch is 3 volts because it's given. So if this branch has 3 volts, then this branch has to have 3 volts because we stated that R2 is in parallel to R3 and 4 together. We can also determine the voltage at R1. Why? The battery and R1 are in series and then R1 is in series to the branch. So in a series circuit, voltage adds. So V total has to equal to V1 plus the V in the branch or the parallel. So total voltage is 5 volts V1 plus 3 volts. So V1 has to be 2 volts. Since I know the current, R1 is going to be V1 over I1, which is 2 volts divided by 4 amps, which is equal to 0 0.5 ohms. Since we know that the battery and R1 are in series, we know that the current here has to be 4 amps, because in a series circuit, the current is constant. So I could find the total resistance. Total resistance is V total divided by I total, which is 5 volts divided by 4 amps, which is equal to 1.25 ohms. So if I could fill the table up, this is 4 amps. The total resistance is 1.25. We know R1 has 4 amps, the voltage was 2, and so the resistance became 0 0.5 ohms. So now I need to look at my parallel branches. So if I only redraw my parallel branch, this is what it looks like. We still don't know R2. We know V2 was given as 3 volts. We know I3 is equal to 1 amp. R3 we don't know. R4 we don't know. V4 is given to as 2 volts. We know also that because this is parallel, this branch will have 3 volts. And this branch will have a total of 3 volts because R1 has 2 volts and they must add up to 5 volts. At this point, you can solve for R2 first or R3 and R4 first. I'm going to solve for R3 and R4 first. Since I know I3 is equal to 1 amp, I also know that I4 is equal to 1 amp. We said that in order for the current to go through R4, it must go through R3 first. So that tells you R3 and R4 are in a series. So now I could find R4 using Ohm's law. 
So R4 is 2 volts divided by 1 amp, so we have 2 ohms. Since these are in a series, the total voltage in R3 and R4 must add up to 3 volts because the branch gets a total of 3 volts. So, so V total must equal to 3 volts, which equals to V3 plus V4. 3 volts is equal to V3 plus 2 volts, so V3 has to equal to 1 volt. Now I can solve for R3 using Ohm's law because V3 over I3 is going to be 1 volt divided by 1 amp. So it's 1 ohms. Now I'm going to fill up some of the table. So R3 and R4 has to add up to 3. So this is going to be 1 volt just like we stated here. So the ohms, the current resistance is going to be 1. We know that the current is going to be constant because R3 and R4 are in a series, so that's going to be 1. And so the total resistance here is going to be 2. So now I could solve for R3. We know the voltage is 3 because that is given. 4 amps came from R1, and we know that R3, 4 got one of them. So that means I2 has to be 3 amps because in parallel circuit, the I total is going to equal to the branches added together. So I2 plus I3, 4. We know this is 4 amps. This is I2 plus 1 amp. So I2 has to be 3 amps. So we know this is 3. So now I can solve for R3. Two because R2 is going to be V2 over I2, which is 3 volts divided by 3 amps, which equals 1.